this is the beginning of the trail to the waterfall. Gotta work up the courage to go down. That must be one of the most fun water slides <laughs> ever. How cool is this? Good morning from Parachi. It is a super hot day already. You can feel the humidity. We're in for a fun day today. We're going to a waterfall where you can slide down it. Never done that before. And we're going to a distillery where they make the traditional Brazilian alcohol. Cachaça. Cachaça. We're gonna grab some breakfast and we'll see you there. Good morning, Parachi. So for breakfast, we're gonna go to the same place we went to yesterday, which has acai, eggs, coffee, things like that. So we spent 35 real, which is around seven dollars, a little bit less. We got pão de queijo, one of the most famous little pastry things in Brazil. It has cheese in there, and it's made with a tapioca outside. It looks like bread, but it's not. Acai is not always easy to find, and we found one we like here. It's not too sweet. Sometimes if they sweeten it too much, it ends up tasting like a grape popsicle or something like that, which we don't really like. Beautiful breakfast. Now we got a couple of snacks to go. More pelle de queijo, uh, a pizza, a pocket of some sort, and now we have to find the bus. We've made it to the large bus station, the bus terminal. So this town is really small, so it's really easy to find the only and main bus station. You can probably walk around this whole town in like a few hours. Still waiting, about a half hour later. We don't know when the next bus is coming. We might have just missed it. Okay, we changed our mind and we decided to look at these vans here. The bus is going to be leaving in about an hour and a half, so we couldn't wait that long. Or we could, but we didn't want to. We figured out that we have to find a van going to Penha. So we found this van where you can split the cost with a bunch of people instead of paying for a private taxi. So hopefully this works out. Typically in these situations and things like this, you wait until it fills up. And you don't really leave until then. Or at least until you get enough people to kind of pay for the trip. Luckily ours is filling up. Okay, about 10 minutes later we're all full and we are taking off. So 8 real, which is a little under $2 for both of us one way to get here. Let's get started. So this is the beginning of the trail to the waterfall. I don't think it's very far, but it's starting off gorgeous in the middle of the rainforest. We can see the waterfall from here already and we've only been on the trail for 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, we heard that it's best to go in the morning because it can get really crowded with tours and people being here. But since it's COVID, we're hoping that that's not the case and we'll have most of it to ourselves. <laughs> As you walk along the trail, it's right here. Right here next to you. That's incredible. This place isn't just about a waterfall. It isn't just about the slippery rock that you can slide down. There are natural pools. There's a bridge to walk across. Let's take a look at all of this. Did 
these kids are going down the waterfall slide standing up. I'm sure once you go down it's fine, but we gotta work up the courage to go down. There's a nice little waterfall up here, and then more up there, but then this is the ticket. I'm gonna be the brave one to go first. I think you can either go laying down or sitting up, but I'm gonna sit up. Oh, that's crazy. How was it? <laughs> A little scary. You don't know which way you're going. You just don't want to end up over there. That's where all the rocks are. That must be one of the most fun water slides ever. <laughs> A natural water slide. We did it. It was a bit scary. I don't know if I'm gonna do it again, but I'm sure Alex will. <laughs> yeah, because you don't. He kind of pushes you off, uh, so you go faster. And it looks like if you go just a little bit too far over this way, you might hit some rocks at the bottom. It's a guy at the top who kind of directs you, but he only speaks Portuguese, so we're like just doing our best to guess what he means. Yeah, just push us. But look, this is such a beautiful location. The whole face of the rock is underwater. And then you have a little cove here, another little waterfall over there. But you can just swim down here, go down this waterfall, swim up there in the other natural pool. There's probably another little section and it's just, it seems endless. It just keeps going. This is such a cool spot even just to come hang out if you're not up for the adventure of actually going down the waterfall. Also it's fun just to watch other people go down so Definitely would recommend checking this out. This is so cool. I've never seen anything like this. Woo! Oh. 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 You okay? Are you okay? I think I gotta hurt my hand. Now we're gonna go to this cool little restaurant that's on the other side of the river. Looks like they have drinks, they have full meals, they have everything. And we get to cross this cool bridge now. Oh, this thing is bouncing! How cool is this? Dang. See Lindsay right there? crazy a couple of them, but we have to find out what these are. They look bright and beautiful. Hopefully they taste good too. What a setting for a restaurant. Looks like we're about to have some live music. He's warming up. These are the kind of experiences that you might not get to have on a tour, or if they do bring you here, then it's on their time and it might be rushed. So we like this. We can just go at our own pace. And the ride here was only less than a dollar each, so pretty good. Yeah, if we had taken a tour, we would have left by now, probably. We wouldn't get to sit at this restaurant, we wouldn't get to sit at the bottom of the waterfall. We pretty much would get the experience we've had so far, but nothing else. I ordered an Espanola. It almost kind of looks like a smoothie, but inside of it is condensed milk, wine, and strawberry. And ice. That's good. It's like a creamy smoothie wine. Sometimes Alex and I are kind of bad at describing the flavors right when we try something, but then we tend to talk about it for a few minutes after and try to 
figure out what does this actually taste like that we're familiar with. We go into the recesses of our brains and our memories to find something that it tastes like. This one, there's something very familiar to it. This one. Great Laffy Taffy that we get in the U.S. There's little Laffy Taffy candies, specifically that flavor. It tastes just like that. So creative, beautiful. And then I got a strawberry batida. Awesome, you can see the milk in there. It's Kasasha, strawberries, some kind of milk, like condensed milk syrup in there. Ah, that's pretty good. I think we're beginning to like batidas as well as caipirinhas. They don't seem to be as popular as caipirinhas, but we see them around. Now that we finished our drinks, we are going to go take a dip at the bottom of the waterfall. Woo! We're on a little tiny bridge. Little planks. <laughs> Crazy. He got air on that too. Jeez, I hurt myself just going down on my butt and he can go down on his legs the whole way on his feet and even get some air. Did you see he jumped up a little bit off of the rock like it was nothing? That looks so scary. That takes some mad skill right there. Yeah, and the thing is, it's not all in the clear. It would be different if this was all one large pool at the bottom and you knew you'd be safe when you hit it. But there are rocks in there in certain areas where you'll hit rocks easily. We're at the bottom of the waterfall where you can slide down. And this is a little nook where you can just hang out and relax and watch people go down. It's actually pretty entertaining. <laughs> okay, waterfall has been awesome, but now we're gonna go try cachaça at a cachaça distillery. That's basically the national alcohol of Brazil. Apparently it's walking distance from here, so you can pair the waterfall and the distillery in the same day. Let's go! Go together like peas and carrots. Oh, look at these. Oh. It bit you? Ah, fire ant just bit me. Alex was gonna take a video because oh. he looked cool, oh. but then he got bit. God. I've never been bit Ooh. by a fire ant. It feels like a bee sting, kind of. And then it was sticking on you. You can. Be yeah, it got caught between my toes and just kept going. So yeah, it's literally right across the street. I'm gonna get a area. So, how do you say it? Kasharia. Kasha Kariya. Kasha Kariya. Kasha Kariya. Kasha You guys can make fun of us for our horrible country. Pretty sure it's Kasha Yeah, it's right here. Beautiful place. Let's go have some drink. This is tucked in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Look at all these beautiful flowers and plants. Whoa. This is just a random chip. Excuse me, why are you from ourselves? Uh, United States. And this is it, the sugar that we are farming. Alcohol, okay. And then uh, it's made only inside Brazil. Only uh, in Brazil it's made? I can use more or less 30 types of the berries to age cachaça. It's free to have a cachaça tasting, so we're going to try a few of these. There's a lot of different flavors to choose from. Acai, banana. Even corn. We said we should try the not as sweet ones first and make our way to the sweet ones. And for those of you who don't know, Kasasha is 
fermented sugar cane. So once they ferment it for about 30 hours, it turns into alcohol. There's a lot more that goes into the process, but that's the gist of it. So I got a white cachaça, and it sounds like you said what you do is you keep your mouth closed, and that's the way that you can really get the aroma and the flavors and everything in your mouth. I think he said because once you open your mouth, it can start evaporating, and that's when you can feel more it of it. It can burn. So you're supposed to keep your mouth closed and then like breathe through your nose, kind of get the taste through your nose. So let's give it a try. I'll try to keep my mouth closed. He said if you do that long enough, you can taste the sugar in it. Yeah, it has a, a sweetness to it. It is strong. It's cachaça, which is pretty strong. It's like having any other alcohol. It said 40% alcohol volume on the bottle. You can feel it on your tongue, kind of. Mine smells sweet. Uh, I'm going to be trying the Gabriella, which is with uh, cinnamon and brown sugar. Much different look to it. Cheers. Okay, that is mm. actually really good. Yeah, he said that's a, a favorite of people these days. It tastes Gabriella. like a smooth fireball. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. better. Like, it's like an apple cinnamon -y taste. So good. We might have to buy a bottle of that one. Uh, Jabuticaba. Jabuticaba. Jabuticaba is a Brazilian grape. And then we're going to try acai. Jabuticaba. <laughs> it's a Brazilian grape. And then uh, acai. Our favorite. So we have a couple good ones here, the Jabuch Kappa, I think it's called. Acai? Easy. This one's supposed to be stronger than the last one we had. Mmm. That's strong. It tastes like a fruity mm. wine, almost. Mine tastes like a cough syrup wine tray. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Acai isn't naturally sweet, so they actually sweeten it with guarana, which is like a popular soda here as well. That's the one that we tried the other day. And guarana is a it, fruit too. Yeah, it's a fruit from the Amazon. Uh, it's something that we see all over here in the soda form. We don't really see the fruit form so much. I guess they just use it in mm -hmm. things. They use it as sweetener, so that's pretty cool. But then in the other ones, they use uh, a different, like a a sugar or like some other kind of sugar to sweeten them up. I guess it depends how it pairs with it maybe. Uh, so it's interesting, they use different sweeteners, natural sweeteners. So uh, the one that Alex just tried is a Brazilian fruit and that's what's cool about being here is you get to try all these different fruits that we never even knew existed and they're delicious. So, mm -hmm. what? They grow most of the fruits right here. So like we're standing under a type of acai tree, which is pretty cool because we wanted to see that, like how acai actually grows in the wild. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So I think we're done with the tasting. We had about four different ones, and I'm not a big alcohol person all on its own. So. Lindsay doesn't really like when alcohol is really strong, or she also doesn't like having a ton of it at once. No. So uh, this is one of those. It's. Uh, having strong alcohol <laughs> so I think it was enough just having a few there. They do their alcohols pretty well here I must say all the different flavors are really interesting and what's really cool is they don't charge you for a tasting. Usually when you come to places like this they'll charge you for tasting their different alcohols. Let's go see what they have inside. I got two more. Acerola which is Brazilian cherry. They actually have a tree right over here and then this is milho or corn. <laughs> Corn, it looks like a cream of corn soup or something. Cherry. Mmm. That's pretty good. It has a it has a milder flavor than I thought it would. So it's not too sweet and over the top, not tart. It's more like a like a caramel kind of flavor. Hmm. Corn. I'm excited to see him try this one. Why would anyone buy corn? That is like melted down candy corn. <laughs> so it's like a candy, uh, it's very sweet. It, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Melted down candy corn, sweet, sweet, sweet corn juice. We're tired after a great long day and we are waiting for the same little van that brought us here to take us back. 
We've been waiting for about an hour. It's a gorgeous night, and that concludes our day. We'll see you guys tomorrow for some more adventures in Parachi. Thank you.